Today I'm going to show you how I made my aerial dress. G'day everyone, welcome back to another kind of catch up with Kiralee. Today I'm going to discuss how I made my aerial dress. Now this isn't a tutorial or anything like that, um, and this is the reference image. It's Ariel's redesign. It's really pretty and I was so happy that I got to make this. So before we proceed, I want to give a massive shout out and a huge, huge thank you to the lovely people at Spotlight. Spotlight actually sponsored part of this build in the sense that they were able to give me the fabric for the majority of this costume. They gave me six meters of the polyester Dupuni and also six meters of the turquoise sparkle net, which was the main feature fabrics of this gown. Anyway guys, I'm gonna stop talking there and uh, let's get on with how I made it. G'day everyone. Welcome, I guess, to the start of a brand new cosplay. I'm doing Ariel, her green dress redesign. It's so sparkly. <laughs> I'm pretty excited because at the end of the day, who doesn't love being a Disney princess, right? So these two fabrics that I have here have actually been sponsored by Spotlight. I am so lucky. <laughs> they are so perfect and fit the vibe of Ariel. This one is a polyester dupeony, which has this cool, almost like wet shimmer look to it. And this one is a sparkle net, which reminds me of some real fancy fishing net or something. Anyway, I love it. However, this is quite thin, so I'm thinking I'll need to back it with something with a bit of stiffness to it, maybe like an organza. Now let me get my picture. All right, I plan on using the Dupioni for the main fabric of the skirt and the bodice, and the sparkle net for the overskirt and the sleeves. And just because I'm feeling in the mood, I want to share with you my commitment to organization this year. Look, I have a pin board now. Right, on to work. First thing to do is the crinoline. Okay, so I've done this kind of mock-up for the crinoline. It's not pretty, but it's working. <laughs> So I've just used some calico for the bag at the bottom there and some leftover ribbon from my wedding for the straps and the hoop wire is being held in place by safety pins. You know, if it works, it works. Right, I have finished cutting down all my boning and I'm pretty happy with the shape of this crinoline for Ariel's dress. So I'm gonna go ahead now and make the pretty version of this out of matching colors. Crinoline's done! Woohoo! <laughs> I've also managed to film my process of putting it all together, so by the time this video goes up, I guess there'll be a tutorial on how I made this. And yeah, future me! <laughs> Make sure you do that! <laughs> anyway, in short, I am really happy how this turned out. In other news, look at what arrived today! Some perfectly matching rhinestones. So I can bling this bad boy up. And, hang on a second, a shell mold. <laughs> so Ariel has three shells and I decided to make them all uniformed. I got this perfect shell mold from AliExpress. Okay guys, so I thought I'd give you a bit of an update with the progress. I'm doing the mock-up for my slip. It's a little bit shorter at the bottom because I want to add like a ruffle of the sparkle net and the organza to the bottom. So there's like a little pop, um, which is seen in some of the reference images. <sighs> I have an issue. I don't think I've got enough GPUNI to cut the slip out of this. So that means I need to use a different fabric. I've got this veil, which is almost the same color, but is quite thin. Or I have this darker but thicker cotton sateen. Hmm. I'm kind of leaning towards the fail because the color is so close. Yeah, let's do that. All right, update time. Slip is done. It's over the back of my sewing chair at the moment. I'm now working on the skirt. It's nothing too special or complicated, to be honest. It's just a big round skirt. But hey, it works, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. Obviously, it's gonna be longer than this calico mock-up. 
Okay, I, I had to stop for a moment and show you guys, those of you who are playing at home, how ridiculous cutting out long circle skirts are. This is 150 centimeters wide fabric. This is on the fold and is taking up most of my living room floor. So much fabric. Ugh. Okay, time to cut. All right, circle skirt is cut and for good measure, I'm gonna leave it hanging up for about 48 hours. So if anything needs to drop, it can. Hey, skirt base is complete. <laughs> Look, this wasn't too hard to be honest. I, I mean, I just sewed the two side seams with a French seam and then sewed bias tape around the waist in the opening and put some press studs to close it. So you can see that when I lift up the skirt, the slip with a ruffle shows. So I'm so glad that I went with a matching colored fail. <laughs> swish, 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 swish. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help myself. So I'm currently working on my bodice and the mock-up is complete. Surprisingly, this, this actually came together quite easily and I actually think it's right. I mean, I even even with the like adding the little bits um, that come up from the bodice to like to connect the sleeves, because this was obviously a strapless pattern, I did that on the fly and it seems to have worked. Also, in terms of the base, I am working with McCall's M7615 again. I love this pattern. I used it for Christine and it just, it shapes my body almost perfectly. And there's only very few alterations that I need to do, which is so nice. And while I'm here, I might as well move on and just draft the sleeves. As a bit of a starting base, I think I'm going to use this Mirror Mirror and McCall's pattern that I have in my stash. And I'm just going to make some heavy modifications to the sleeve pattern. Okay, I've figured out the sleeves, I think. I'm going for a straight sleeve base and then going to do a puff sleeve which is going to be mounted on the top. But at the moment it's all in calico and I want to try the puff especially out of a scrap of organza to make sure that it falls right. Da da! Isn't this such a gorgeous piece of beigeness? Can't believe, I just, I honestly cannot believe how easy this mock-up came together. Usually mock-ups are the section that I really struggle with and I say some really colorful language, um, but not this time. So yeah, I guess it's now onto the real fabric. Ooh, I get to play with the pretties. It's happening. All right, so I have got the lining and the strength layers sewn separately. So now I think I'm gonna go and add in the boning channels to the strength layer, and then I'm gonna sew the strength layer and the lining together. I realized technically this is the wrong way, but this fabric is too nice not to show off. The lining and the strength layers have been sewn together and the bones inserted to the boning channels I made into the strength layer. And I just did a quick fit and oh my gosh, it's so comfy and it's, Fitting nicely. This is looking good, guys. It's looking good. Sorry, guys. I forgot to film. My bad. But look! The outside layer is now complete and sewn on too. I'm a bit proud. I altered the pattern to allow for this extra scrunching. <laughs> it may not look like much, but it was something. I had to add extra width and height to the top without altering any of the joins to the seams of the front side panels. So yeah, it's the small things in life we find joy in, okay? Okay, so the bodice is pretty much done for now and I've moved on to the mock-up of the overskirt. Now, because the overskirt always opens from the front point on the bodice, I've decided that I'm gonna sew the overskirt to the base of the bodice and not the skirt itself. This crazy patchwork like thing is the shape of that overskirt. It's fine. It will work. I hope. <laughs> okay, I am so annoyed. I spent so long perfectly pinning the net to the organza to ensure that they would match up when I sewed them together. But after I cut it out, and then held the two layers to the skirt, the net sagged because it's stretchy. Anyway, 
I had to unpin it all and will now repin it all to take into account the overhang. It's such a pain, but it needs to be done. So that's what I'm going to do. Overskirt is done! As much as it had its moments of not wanting to play nice, it's really gorgeous now it's on. <laughs> These three fabrics together, love them. I can't wait to see it with the sleeves, so guess what's next on my list to cut out? <laughs> It's late, my camera doesn't want to focus, but the sleeves are on. They look super tight on the mannequin, but I tried it on and it is a-okay. So I am sewing in bias binding to the seam of the sleeve and the bodice, and look, I pricked myself. It's officially a cosplay, guys. I've bled on it. Quick update. Bodice is almost 100% done. I've added bias binding to the inside so I don't scratch up my armpits. Um, and I've also added a small elastic ring to the sleeve edge at the point to go around my middle fingers. So that way the sleeve kind of stays where it's meant to stay. You know, I'm not sure this is the right way to do piping, but heck, it's the way I'm going to do it. Going to sew it, trim it, and then sew it onto the waist and shoulder lines of the bodice. Okay, I don't know when I last updated you guys, but the dress is all but done. I've just got to rhinestone it. So I am going to move on and keep on going. Firstly, I tried pressing foam clay into the shell mold and I chucked it in the freezer for about an hour. And the results were awesome. Ah, oh, love it. So I'll let this dry fully, but it's wonderfully detailed and lightweight. So that is looking like a win also at the same time about to start work on these shoes because I want them to match the dress. So I'm going to use some scraps left over of the polyester Gipioni uh, to cover them. Shoes are covered. I did it the same way that I do it in my shoe covering tutorial. I guess I'll try and link that in the description for you um, if you're interested. Also, I did four shells and primed them. So the next thing for the shells will be painting. Okay, I actually just realized I never showed you the finished dress. <laughs> My bad. So I added the piping and I have a little more movement in the sleeves than I anticipated, so that's awesome. And look, shoes that match. Ah, satisfying. I decided to be a responsible adult today and spend all my time rhinestoning. One by one, sticking them on with E6000. And hey, if rhinestone shoes isn't Disney, I don't know what is. Okay, so it's later in the day from the last clip that I just showed. The dress has been rhinestoned. And look, ooh, shoes. To be honest, I'll probably end up putting more rhinestones on the skirt, but I think I'm done for today. I have tweezer hand cramp. It's a thing. So I don't know when I last updated you, but I painted the shells with some acrylic paint and then I topped it off with some glitter paint. Ah, uh, look at that brooch! Is it just me or does it make the outfit? For Ariel's wig, I have two wigs, a wig head, and other things I need to weft these together. So that's what I'm going to do now, and I will change my memory card because I think I'm going to make a quick tutorial on that. I guess if I've done that, it will be a link in the description. Yeah, future me, get on it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm nearly finished sewing in the extra wefts for Ariel, but I just want to show you this because it looks like I've scalped either like Jessica Rabbit or Poison Ivy. I literally only need to style this bang and then Ariel is done. I am so close. Why is this taking me so long? Procrastination? Well, yes, a little bit, but mostly because of these two. Please meet Lacey and Taffeta, our newest additions to this household. Trust me. They are as mischievous as they are fluffy, so I have found it so hard to get five minutes alone. And that's how I made Ariel. So I'm going to put some photos right now of me wearing Ariel. It was such a fun project to do and I absolutely loved how this turned out. Uh, I 
I'm really looking forward to doing a proper photo shoot with it because it is a fun costume to wear and kids love this costume which is a huge huge bonus when you're cosplaying to have a little kid actually think you're the character and their minds are like blown when they see you. Anyway guys, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe at the end of this video. Uh, I love making these videos, they're, they're the funnest ones to, to watch on YouTube as well, I think. So I would love to do more, I hope that you like it as well. Um, it's just, they take a while to put together because from the start of a project to an end of a project, it could be a couple of months. So bear with me, I will do more, it's just going to take some time. Alright guys, see you later, bye!